Hello everyone, my name is Pradeep Bishwam Mohan and I'm a part of the security services at Akamai. So today I wanted to take 10 to 15 minutes of your time to walk you through the reporting aspects that Akamai provides with respect to security. So once you log into Luna Control Center, everything related to reporting is configured under Monitor. So you can click on Monitor and then Security Center. So just be aware that this is a demo account that I've taken for the purpose of this training. And as you can see here, uh, this will give you an option to choose different security configurations. So within your account, please make sure that you choose the right security configuration. Once you've done that, you can choose the time range. You can go all the way back up to 90 days for this dashboard. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you can see that there is a panel here that captures the configuration events. So this is really important and nifty because it tells you the exact date and time during which there was a configuration deployment that happened and it helps you to correlate this event with the graph that you're going to see in a bit. So if you scroll down, you see that there is a traffic and activity graph. So the first graph here captures the overall traffic in blue and then it overlays the security traffic on top of that. So now it gives you a really good picture of what percentage of your overall traffic is your attack traffic and does, does your attack traffic spike up during certain periods of your day or time. Uh, and if you look at 90 days of traffic, you can also see if there was a spike on any one of those days. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can see that this attack traffic is drilled down even further. So as you may know, Akame has multiple protection controls, starting from application protection, reputation, rate controls, bot, and DOS protection. So what we, do, what we have done here is that we've broken this attack traffic down into all of these protection controls so that visually you get a good sense of what occupies most of your attack traffic. So for this demo, you see that most of them are bot traffic followed by the app protection. And if you scroll down a little further, you will see that you have a notification center. So every time Akamai wants to notify you of any improvements that we have done. So as an example, you can see here that bot manager went through an improvement with the detection capability. So it also gives you a release notes if you're interested to learn about that a little bit more. And in this panel, it also con you know, captures the configuration status. So as you onboard more and more properties on Akamai, this gives you a very good sense of what percentage of your host names are protected by WAF. And if you see here, it also gives you a tuning status. So the tuning status typically captures are your host names protected behind WAF. If yes, have you enabled all of the co protection controls such as reputation, bot manager, DOS protection, etc. And once you've enabled them, the last check is have you moved them into deny mode? Have you upgraded your versions to the latest KRS policy? So it captures all of these health checks and gives you a rating with a red, green, yellow, and you can get a quick sense of what's the status of your policy. And as you can appreciate, all of this is a very high level data, which is your just key dashboard. And if you go here to the left panel, there's a lot more tools available, which gives you a bit more in-depth data. So for the purpose of this training, I'm going to go into the trends. As you can see here, there are trends available for WAF, uh, DOS, which is your rate controls, reputation, and bot trends. So let me take WAF as an example. So if you look at this data, what it does is that it gives you a bit more breakdown into all of these numbers. It tells you that during this period for this security configuration, these were the total number of attack hits against the total, uh, in a total hits on Akamai, platform, Akamai uh, which is 586.2K. And it breaks this down even further to tell you what's the edge page request. So if you have a lot of static content, etc., so this gives you a much clearer picture of what's the number of requests to the base pages and out of that, what's the number of attack requests? And it also gives you a bit, bit more drill down into the bandwidth. So it converts the page request into bandwidth and gives you a good sense of what you know, percentage of the total traffic is your attack traffic in terms of bandwidth. And if you look at the second panel here, it breaks down the attack. So given that this is a demo account and attacks are automated, you see such a clear split between SQL, RFI, and cross-site scripting. 
Whereas if you look at your account, it's going to be a bit more haphazard. So by just looking at this, you can get a good sense of what are the types of attacks that your applications are facing. And this panel here gives an immediate sense as to are your attacks being denied or are they are they in an alert mode? If it's alert, it gives an indicator that you need to go back, look at your policies and do what is necessary to move them from alert into deny. So we've seen this already. So instead of looking at all of the attack traffic, it looks at the web application firewall attack traffic and overlays against your overall traffic. And if you scroll down a bit further, uh, so you can see that again in a graphical format, what's the spread of SQL injection, RFI, cross-site scripting, you can get a good trend if it is spiking up during certain periods of the day, um, more often than not, if your you know, website is dormant during the night, so you would see a slight spike in the attack traffic and it gives you a sense that someone is trying to do something different during a low period of your traffic. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you can see that if you have multiple policies, it also gives this graph for multiple policies. And again, gives a good sense of which policy is very active against the others. And in the recent times, we've also started segregating the API-based reporting separately. So if you do have APIs onboarded, it gives a very good sense of which APIs are being targeted more. And at a high level, it also tells you what's the host name that's being targeted. As you can see, this is a demo, which is why there's just one host name and the top attack country is United States. And now let's drill down much deeper into these attacks and see what's happening. So if you open this again, uh, I'm going to skip the remaining trends because it's very similar, but breaks that down into repetition, etc. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is the analysis. So this is where you really want to get into the depth of things and see what's happening. So uh, for this training, I'm going to choose Web Security Analytics. Um, so let me just click on it and wait for a second. So it gives me notifications. So I've dismissed that. Excellent. So this lets you drill down into your attacks much, much, you know, much, much closer and deeper. Uh, so as always, make sure that you've selected the right configuration. And in terms of the time frame, this can go back up to 30 days. So it's a lot of data, but it's also very powerful. For the last 30 days, you can drill down into every single attack that's happened on your site. And once you come here, you can see that there are a lot of these common dimensions. And by default, the first view that you set and you know, that you get is the distribution of the attack types. So it tells you that for the period, these are the total number of attacks and it's distributed between bot, WAF and DOS. So again, for the purpose of this training, I'm just gonna focus on web application firewall, which is SQL, cross-site scripting, etc. And what I'm gonna do is click here and then apply a filter. So if you've got your sharp eyes, you would have noticed two things. So one is that whatever filter we applied here, it comes up here. So if you see here, you've also got a lot of different options. You can filter based on countries, IP addresses, etc., etc. And you can also see that a lot of these WAF requests also triggered DOS, which means when they were triggering the SQL attacks, etc., they were also doing it at a very high pace. And now that we've applied the right filters and you know that there are requests which are triggering both WAF and DOS, what I can do is in your website, if there is a spike in a specific duration, you can choose that. So I'm just going to randomly select a data point. And during this time, there are a lot of dimensions that you can look as to what's happening. So if I click on the IP addresses, you would see that what are the top IP addresses that are triggering these WAF requests? Again, so here it's a single IP address that's doing that but which also means you can look at the top IPs, top countries, what are the top host names, what are the top paths being targeted, and is there a different set of user agents or is that like, you know, a single user agent that, is, uh, that the requests are coming from, and which policy is being targeted. And if you go to action, it also tells you what percentage of the attacks were alerted versus denied, etc. So as you can see, this common uh, dimensions here are very, very powerful to drill down into what you really want to see. So if you take, for example, that if there is a deny and alert here, you can filter even further on alert so that you can drill down into what are those attacks that are actually going back to the origin. So given that we filtered on WAF, we are more curious to see what 
controls are triggering under WAF. So I select the web application firewall group here and then if I click on attack group, you can see that it's triggering SQL, RFA and cross-site scripting. So if you remember, this is exactly uh, the same distribution that we saw during the dashboard as well. So if I want to investigate a little bit further into SQL injection, what I can do is I can either open that in a new tab so that I keep all these filters as it is or I can just filter it here. So once I filter, as you can see, it has WAF and SQL injection. And if I go to rule combination, it gives me a quick sense of all the different combination of rules that are triggering. So as you can see, these are the rule combinations. If you go to rule, it tells you the individual rules that got selected, etc., etc. And if I click on sample log view, it gives me the top requests in that particular filter category that I have. Yeah, so you can see that it gives you 100 requests at a time. And as soon as you see this, you get what's the time frame, what's the connecting IP address. As you scroll down, you can see that if there are different IPs that are attacking, which countries are the requests coming from? Is that a get method, post put, what are the host names, paths? Did we respond with a 403 or a 200? What's the action applied, etc. So if you select on any one of this and you scroll down a bit further, you will see that it gives much more information saying that um, yeah, if you just do a view URL decode, it's again very handy. You don't have to copy that and then put that into a different tool for decoding. So you can see that gives you what's the general headers, what's the request headers, response headers. As you can see, it was denied from within Akamai, which is why the server comes in as Akamai Ghost. And you can also get the client information here, which is very, very handy. So you know which country it's coming from, where is it hosted, is that a hosted IP, what's the ISP, etc. And here is where it tells you what rules got triggered. So as you can see, it was just SQL injection. And within SQL injection, there were multiple rules that got triggered. And for each of those, it also tells you what's the selector and match. Selector basically means where did we find that attack vector. So in this case, it was an argument, which is GYD. And the match tells you what's the data which we matched to tell you that it is malicious. So with this, it's very, very powerful to understand exactly what kind of attacks are happening on your site and what is what is it that's going through back to the origin, what's being denied. This also helps you to analyze a true positive against a false positive. Yeah, so to summarize, this tool is extremely powerful in terms of incident response, in terms of looking at historical data to understand what's happening across your site. Uh, eventually, this tool is go also going to become a single tool, which is going to show you both historical and real-time data. So I would highly encourage you to go into Web Security Analytics within your account and have a play around with it. In addition to that, uh, so there are also different tools available. So if you go to Reputation Console, you can put in any IP address there, and it tells you what's the reputation score, what's the history, why did we give it a certain score, which category it is, etc. And within events, it also tells you, uh, captures basically the audit trail of when was your configurations deployed, who deployed it, and was there any other security events that happened. So it captures all sorts of information there so that you can correlate with anything that you're trying to investigate. So with that, uh, we are also trying to consolidate all of the security tools in the security center. So keep a close eye on it. We are actively developing it and we are actively improving it every day. And if you have any feedback, please feel free to pass that on to your point of contact at Akamai and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you. Bye.